Uh, all week long at 8.05, Mary Beth Blair has been with us here to cover Youth Fair. And we're going uh, opposite way. Last show, we had sweet little nine-year-old girl in here. Yeah. Right? Right. Right? Right. And now we go with Mike Withrow. <laughs> yeah, big jump. Big Mikey, jump how are you, buddy? Jump. Doing very well. Glad to be in the studio. Good to see you, man. It has been a great week at the Berkeley County Youth Fair. So glad to be able to send some of our premier youth in to be on air. You, you know, when you took this uh, job as extension aid, you had some big shoes to fill. Oh, absolutely. Following in the footsteps of Doug Hovatter, um, you know, and that was my extension agent growing up, um, you know, knowing to carry on the 4-H legacy of Berkeley County, you know, that, that would, you know, terrify anybody, um, but definitely glad to have his support. Um, he's been an amazing mentor, um, friend. It's just been one of those things where I've been able to pick up and run with what he laid before me. Is Doug around still? Oh, absolutely. He was just at the fair the other day. Great. Um, and he's a constant supporter of the program. Um, I'm, I'm writing my community. Communi- I can't even say it. Um, the file <laughs> I have to Bill write how to, to pronounce go. that. Bill Cumulative <laughs> is the word. It's, it's too early in the morning. Um, but it, I have to write a file for WVU to go up for um, promotion and tenure. Um, he asked if he could be a reviewer for it. That's awesome. Um, so it's, it's great. great to have that level of support because I know a lot of agents around the state don't have that. And let me tell you, Mikey is somewhat of, not mm-hmm. somewhat, he is a celebrity at the <laughs> Berkeley County Youth Fair. Those exhibitors, they just love him. And so I observed yesterday, so they do this fun thing for the kids uh, in the amphitheater area. Fun for the kids. Fun for the kids. <laughs> but I got a text and it's like, meet us in the amphitheater with video and camera, you know, at whatever time it was. So Lexi and I headed over there and it was an uh, amphitheater field full of youth exhibitors with water balloons oh, i mean no. thousands of water balloons like five thousand and and <laughs> so and they had and the adults which mikey he was up on the hill talking to us and they were all mikey mikey i mean everywhere i mean all uh, that's all you heard and he's like he handed us over his wallet <laughs> money Lexi, camera like, keys like, please keep he's all like here dry. you go <laughs> and he's like i guess i ha-. i mean but they would not start without him and so of course he was like the he's like the coach so you see this one girl come in one of the Yates girls she had a, a, t- a huge Tupperware full of like water that had drained out of some of the Leftover water balloons water. <laughs> and she sneaks up behind Mikey and dumps it oh, on him the dump- but their love for him be- and respect for him you know whenever he's on air like it's constantly hey 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 everybody <laughs> wants to talk to Mikey but it, it truly he's doing a great job because when he he just carries the, the the respect of not only the kids but everybody at the fair needs Mikey. His phone when he's on air blows up like he's getting. <laughs> I'm glad I have that little milk messages. can that sits on the <laughs> side. <laughs> so well, yeah, it's great to hear. Now before we go further, Mary Beth, you said you wanted to break from uh, youth fair tradition and you wanted to because it's Friday. You wanted to talk politics for a while no. because you love doing that so much. <laughs> I did not. So that go ahead, the you know, opposite. Take, go on your rant. You, no. Absolutely. So if you're running for any state office, <laughs> let me invite you to our 6:30 livestock sale tonight at the Berkeley hey, Youth Fair. Exactly. Yes. Now that is something we could talk about because the youth deserve that, Absolutely. and um, that is the big thing on Friday for the youth fair is the livestock auction we build up for this uh you guys build up for this the kids work hard all year long and we just want to come on here today too that's why i thought mikey was the most appropriate to bring on today because he organizes um, behind the scenes the the livestock auction this is this is a very important uh, cumulative uh point of the fair where the kids really get to see and experience the fruit of all their labor Absolutely. so if you are running for office that's the only politics i'll talk okay you should come out and invest and in. i mean that's if you're wanting to give back to the community and make a difference and get your name out there you certainly will because your name will be called when you when you buy it hopefully um, multiple times multiple times and you get your picture with the uh whoever you buy the animal from and certainly you can use that as a in your, I, I, if I was running your campaign, which I won't, because we already discussed yeah. that, I'm not doing politics anymore. Bill, did you but, have anything you yeah. want to add? Uh, yeah, I was going to, <laughs> I'm going to back to tonight for folks like my kite as a politician. Do you come in to buy or to sell the bull? Ah, good one. Good All of one. the above. Good one. No selling the bull. No selling from the you bull. guys. Do you have only a, from the exhibitors? Do you have a badger category? At all? <laughs> sure. All right. If they bring money, we got room for you. Yeah. 
I'll say if Which, they bring the right amount of, of money, I will write anything on that sold to list. Yeah, we can Beautiful. call out sold to the badger. <laughs> Thinks it's going to stick. I yeah. think it's going to stick. We'll do it. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, it should stick after this past week, yes. So, All right, now don't divert. Come we on, a, we got uh, business to get down to. We got the Berkeley County Youth Fair. Thank you, Mary Beth. We had a steer. Reel them back in. Thank you. Go for Thank about you. twenty thousand last year. Is that about right? Yeah. Our grand champion steer last year sold by Andrew, Andrew. Moore, uh, yeah. but for twenty thousand dollars, and it was our. It was probably the. It was a record high steer for any involvement that I've had. Yeah, with you and I would just say, if you want to know why, you should look, go. Whose phone? See, was it mine? Was it Mikey's? We talked about this ahead of time. No yours, buzzing on the table. You didn't knock the clock over. Who was yours? Heights just <laughs> yeah. on the who, table. Who bought this uh, bull steer last time? Oh, was I it Ridgeway Storage. Okay, and the we ha you can go look on the, your YouTube page and see the interview with Andrew Bohr I did at the fairgrounds one of the most polite, respectful, knowledgeable, mature. I mean, this guy is a competitor at all levels. Yesterday, he had told us, I think we interviewed him Wednesday because he was a grand champion and we interviewed him regarding that. He was getting ready to pack up, head down to the state fair to take the animals that he's showing there, then get in the car and drive back so he can be here in person for the livestock auction. Now he could have someone else walk his animal and his name alone would bring a top dollar but he said it's so important to me to see and talk with and personally um have that conversation at the livestock buyers auction and then afterwards whoever buys my steer i want to thank them in person i want to be here i'm not going to just take for granted the investment that these businesses do give to our to us and he said too that it's this fair is so different than other fairs in terms of uh, the generosity of the businesses, he said, way above the Absolutely. average. Our so, kids are very fortunate that we do have that level. Kudos of to our businesses in our community for going so above and beyond and being what, the best. What's the and I'll use the same word we've used several times. What's the cumulative amount of money that was uh, brought into the auction last year? Five hundred and forty-eight thousand dollars. Wow. Five forty-eight thousand. Wow. I believe that was where our final number was. Was, was that a record? Um, every year we're getting a re new record, um, which has been amazing. Um, but that l last year's total was the highest that it's been, um, I think, in 17 years. And what does that money um, go towards, Mikey? It all goes back to the kids. Minus 2%. Admin um, fee, basically. Yeah, we think a 2% admin fee. It really just pays for copy paper. Um, and, you know, there's clerical things that we have to do. We have to, you know, transport animals. We have to make sure that there's... Um, Kind of additional lines of safety there um, and then we also take fifteen dollars out of that to pay for their buyer pictures um, so there's no markup for that mm -hmm. um, no kids, profit it's no, not a profit not. for the youth fair it's not a fundraise for the berkeley county youth fair association this is all about the kids if you're making an investment tonight as a buyer you can be sure that that individual who has spent money on feed and just they're you know hard-earned time i mean they're out there daily multiple times a day for a year working on this yeah. animal so on a given year what percent of the uh of the youth are new the first time they've been at the youth fair are you talking about just livestock or well, livestock total? primarily yeah livestock. um probably less than 15 percent okay um and the reason for that is a lot of um, members when they first join they start with indoor projects um, and that's a trend that we're seeing due to the constraints of where they're keeping projects um, but usually after a few years in our 4-H clubs, they're able to build those relationships. Um, and I was, I was a product of it, so I actually never kept any of my animals at my own location, um, which is kind of funny because my mom and dad did not watch me show because I started with chickens, and they just thought, oh, he's just showing chickens. Um, and then, you know, it, it turned into one lamb with Tracy and Brian Butler and their daughters Ashley and Katie. Um, and the last year, um, Dad had taken, you know, three or four years and not came during the actual show day. Um, and he was like, well, what days do you show? Like, I want to come watch you age out. Um, and he's like, I, I was like, I don't think you want to watch me age out. Um, and he was like, no, like, I'm going to come watch you age out. Um, so I was like, well, then you have to be at the lamb show, the goat show. Um, I helped with the beef show, and then I was competitive in the dairy show. And he was like, none of these are your animals. I was like, well, actually, all of them are my animals. Thank you for the investment. Yeah. Um, but it was one of those things where, you know, each additional year I could kind of expand a little bit more. Um, and, you know, some of them were leased animals. All of my dairy were leased from Whitney Henry. Very thankful for that opportunity. Um, but a lot of kids now, if you want to do the breeding show, you don't actually have to own them. You can lease them. 
Uh, talk a little bit about the lease. How does that work? Uh, do the uh, the the animal stays on the property that uh, the owner, but then does the uh, the the shore the one that sh uh, shows the animal? Do they work with it? Yep. Er so every the exhibitor, day? Um, it's it's a private treaty agreement. Okay. Um, so Bill, if you owned a dairy farm and you wanted kids to be involved in dairy, um, you would write up a contract that says, you know, this is what I want and this is how much I'm going to offer you for the lease. Um, so horses do it. I leased my cows for a dollar for a year um, with the guarantee that I would come work hay and they owned a small farm and they also did concessions and then I would work two events in a concession stand. Um, and that's essentially all that I had to do. I came out and helped fit for the fair and some other shows, uh, but ultimately that commitment and being able to say, yes, he came, he worked with the animals and he did those two concession. Um, that was all that they had to check for me to be able to show. Yeah. Mary Beth, give us the rundown on the Friday schedule and the Saturday, too, at the Youth Fair, because right. obviously we won't be on Saturday morning. Right. So, unfortunately, for those who might want to come out today and tomorrow to see animals and indoor projects, you probably won't see much of that. That is heading out the doors today, Animal, right, Mikey? Animals is still good. So, animals they'll be able to see on view until we close the barns for the sale. Ten, okay, um, this afternoon. So, so you could. Able... So, if you're wanting to see the, the animals, get down there early with your kids today before the livestock auction. What time do you close down the barn? Um, so, we, we don't technically close them. What we do is the pigs will have to kind of put boards across that we can walk them from the pig barn to the sale arena. Um, and then as the goats and lambs sell, we kind of shuffle them around so that we can get ready to load out to go to slaughterhouses or resale. So today's okay for the animals. Indoor projects are being released this right morning. Now. <laughs> uh, right now. And so, but that, so that portion of the fair is coming to a close, but there's still two days of live action the carnival tonight starts at six all the vendors open at five for food go down and eat on you know friday night. there's so many options um tonight in the and down at the track is the flat drags the trucks that just that will be competing in that and that's a very you know popular thing and then saturday night in the track is the demolition derby so that's really really popular as well got canceled last year so thank goodness the weather's looking good for the closing of like the big event that'll be a big event saturday and that's mainly what you're going to come to see the commercial exhibitors the um, food vendors the carnival and then those live events in the um the track other than that there's not really anything else than the auction tonight so the they, attendance the attendance has that been compared to previous years uh, from what i understand talking to dawn it's been other than the rain the big yeah, rainstorm we monday. had on monday um it, it's been great the rodeo was no seat in the stands for that and wednesday night our new event the flat out freestyle uh, motor uh, bike event was almost a packed uh, stadium and, and that brought out a lot of people a lot of great reviews on Facebook from people who saw it and said please bring that back next year they really responded well so I think that it's been incredible of course we had a little rain was it yesterday so that kind of people were slow to trickle in I think yesterday but by the time I was heading out at 9 after our broadcast 9 30 it the fair was packed so I don't know what your person oh sorry I don't I'm just clumsy just sorry everything I, that's just me in general you just so, gotta gear go you just gotta gear down I am very high strung if you haven't noticed so if you just yeah if you just saw me yesterday I was very much like that but we are on the downhill slide at this point <laughs> what would you say attendance um, I, attendance is good um, the one thing I would remind people is, you know, if they do want to come out and they do have questions about livestock, tonight's the night. Um, you know, I, I think there's still a lot of questions and stereotypes around what 4-H and FFA does. Um, but if you really want to see what the community does for those programs, tonight's the night right. to view that. Right. If, if I, a, a kid that is not involved with 4-H and FFA right at this point in time, but they, they go to the fair and they get excited about it, yeah. what would be the best avenue to get involved how I would think, they approach? i really think i mean mikey is going to be the expert opinion but like mother yeah. what i've learned from a, a parent perspective is you know anybody can get involved in like a 4-h group so you want to find something maybe a friend of your child's that might be involved that might help them going into at a later point into a 4-h club find someone 
within your community that you you don't have to live in a I mean, remember Haley was here and she was she's in a 4 H club that isn't in the region of the county yeah. that she's in but so that if you're in the 4 H area but I think from what I've seen and Mikey can correct me but if you're in the high school age FFA would be the way to go like anybody could yeah. join their FFA program in the high school what for whatever school they're at as an extracurricular activity and they're really doing some incredible things beyond yeah. it's not just a club and you know a, a socialization thing they're doing a lot of fun things but also very um beneficial things for their their future in terms of learning to, to public speak learning about agriculture more but it's that, i mean what would you say mike no Is you hit it spot on um, or, or go you, to mikey's website yeah, He'll, it, <laughs> berkeley county extension you know um, but if they're interested in ffa they do need to make sure that they talk to their counselors leading into school um, just because you do have to have an agricultural class okay. to be enrolled in ffa um, FFA is a three model system. Um, so it's not only the class time, but students have something called an SAE, which is a supervised agricultural experience. There you go. Um, and then they have, of course, you know, the class time. Um, but, you know, that's kind of three circle model is what FFA truly believes in um, from local, state, and national levels. Um, and it, it really is a gateway. And I, right. I was a product of 4 H and FFA both. Um, we what still about, have a lot of kids that do both. What about 4 H? Where is like the portal of, like, if I want to sign my grandson or granddaughter? up for 4-H where would I find like a listing or like op you know what are what's available how don't you have like a clearing house of all 4-H's in Berkeley County on our website okay. so if you just search Berkeley County West Virginia 4-H it pops up as the first mark there you go. Um, and at the very bottom if you click on clubs it has a list of all the clubs and when they meet and where they meet um, but what I always tell people is if you're still on you know a little nervous about what club to go to um, call our office it's 304-264-1936 um, and we will talk you through that process because right. um, every club is very different yeah. so we want to make sure that we find the right fit for fit. your kids right so can, you, can you, you talk a little bit about the other organizations that participate at the youth fair mm -hmm. like boys and uh, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, uh, Boys and Girls Club, those, what, what so are they doing? Four. We usually, um, up until this year, we have had a Boys and Girls Club exhibit for photography. This year we do not, um, just because their photo room was down. Um, Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts is a little bit more um, challenging, um, just because usually it takes a relationship with the fair to get those projects in. Um, and we've we've started those conversations, but they haven't been fruitful um, in the sense that it does take a lot of work to pull that off. Um, you know, I start on the fair right after I get done camp in June. Um, so it, it, it takes a lot as a leader to make sure you have volunteers to do all that. Um, so I probably have a team of uh, 30 people that help just run our indoor exhibits. Um, but, you know, that, that includes 500 projects that are coming in and judged and you know putting ribbons on and making sure, sure. that they're all correct um but it, it definitely takes a village to be able to pull that off um and it, i mean we are very willing and accepting if we want to get boy scouts and girl scouts back into the fair um we've we have we, ha we probably haven't had a exhibitor from boy scouts do livestock in six or seven years what so what would you say so it's just the two primary the 4-h and the the 4-h um... ffa are the two largest um, 4-H has about 300, 400 um, exhibitors. FFA has about 100 between the four schools. And those two are the primary ones showing. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and you'll see representation. We do have the Boy Scouts represented in our commercial building this year. Um, we've talked with John multiple times about getting them involved. John Elliott. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so he is um, more than willing to be on board. So we're starting to collaborate more. Um, we do a... a <laughs> What we planned as a small community event turned into a large community event with our trunk retreat. Um, so he comes and supports that, um, but definitely more collaboration down the road. Mikey Withrow in studio with us and Mary Beth Blair as we wrap up and wind down our Youth Fair week. Our TV coverage continues today and tomorrow as well on uh, TV 10. Mary Beth has been anchoring that all week along with Lexi, her daughter. Mikey, how much work do you do or coordinate with the USDA locally? Um, it was funny. Well, I actually, right before I went on there yesterday, um, the Department of Ag called my cell phone, and it was, you know, nothing for me just to pick up and start talking away. Um, but we do have a good relationship with the local guys as well as the regional um, office in Moorefield. Um, and the reason for that is whether it's livestock, canning, um, baked goods, you know, cottage rules, whatever it may be, um, making sure that our public are educated on what they need to be able to produce and offer things to the public. Um, that's always an essential role. 
Um, but we're in constant communication as needed. Has the spotted lantern fly become a problem it for is local here. farmers? Yes, it is here. And for at the beginning, we were monitoring calls, so we were tracking them. Um, but after about the 500th call, um, and it was only Tuesday of that week, uh, <laughs> we realized this was much bigger. So once we kind of turn those numbers over, um, you know, it becomes an imminent problem. Um, we'll see a lot more danger to our crops as we move into spring, um, just because as those nymphs, I know I'm using words again, but the, the, the don't mean much, um, but as those nymphs, yeah, as Layman's those um, immature insects mature into the adult form, that's in the spring, that's really when we'll see um, a lot of crops get hurt. Mm. Bill, Bill we, do you know about your European hornets? Well, yeah, we we'll may talk about that sometime. I have an, I'll have come back next week for that discussion. Yeah, that, that's a real, that's a major problem now, yes. these European hornets. But going back to the fair quickly, got a uh, comment, a question from Kathy okay. Cloud. You talked a great deal about the chicken dinner. How did that go, Mary Beth? Went great. The line was like crazy. And I'm sure they sold out. I didn't really get. I, they always do, but See, it was, I get my meals first, so I don't have to stay around. <laughs> yeah. That's the one of the best parts. It, it, definitely. So, from all, huge success. Yeah, it's always a huge. I mean, yeah. it's just that's one of those things that you don't even have to be there to know that it's went down and it was great. But when I got there to go on on air, I had to like part the Red Sea to yeah, get through yeah, to that building because yeah. the line was just, you, people you did, were not budging and it was all the way back to the goat barn. <laughs> you, you did not pull rank and said, I'm Mary Beth Blair. Yeah. I, I mean, I did, I, no, I didn't, I, no, I didn't. And so, yeah, no, I had already eaten when I got there, forgot that that was that day. So we didn't, you know, overindulge. Hey, we've got about a minute left. Yep. If you can run down what's left today and tomorrow at the fair, Mary Beth, and a final word from Mikey afterward. Absolutely. Like I said, just come down tonight, um, get involved in the flat drags or watch that uh, livestock auction. Call Mikey if you want to get in or just show up and you can register. Uh, we're not doing the celebrity milking, just FYI. So that's not on the schedule, but carnival food vendors commercial vendors live events come on out to the fair I, I think the biggest thing is just to make sure the community understands how thankful we are for their participation Absolutely. um nothing that we do down there would be possible without their willingness to come out and support the kids um and you know being one of those final remaining fairs that is dedicated towards the youth um you know this is this is a prize that we have in the community and we need Absolutely. to make sure that we cherish it and you know, develop into something bigger for the next 75 years to come. Well, it's always well supported. So. Oh, absolutely. Thanks for the work you do, Mary Beth. Good to see you this year again. It's been fun. <laughs> it is uh, 831. Sure you don't want to keep talking this to Youth Fair instead of that old politics stuff? <laughs> Let's just trash it. <laughs> Two minutes blaring with Roe Wall to Wall. Hey, we can do it. It, it wouldn't be the first time we just improvised. <laughs>